Hi everyone, today we will be building a machine learning model to predict price of Apple stock using Scikit-learn, Pandas, and Yahoo Finance API. We'll be using Google Colab for this project, which is a hosted Jupyter Notebook service that requires no setup to use and provides free access to computing resources. If you do not have a Colab account, you can create a free account by signing in with your Google account at collab.research.google.com. I'll put this link in the description box below. Today, first, we'll be downloading Apple stock price data using Wire Finance package, which allows us to access Yahoo Finance API. Then, we'll be cleaning and visualizing our stock market data. After that, we'll set up our target for machine learning and start training first machine learning model using Random Forest Classifier from scikit-learn library. Then we'll build a backtesting system based on historical data and add additional predictors to our model to improve it. I'm sure this will be fun and helpful project. Before getting started, I would like to say that I would really appreciate if you could like and subscribe to see more, more videos like this in the future. So let's get started. The first thing we'll do is we'll import a package called Yfinance import yfinance uh, as yf. This package calls the Yahoo Finance API to download daily stock prices. And the first thing we'll do is we'll initialize something called a ticker class, which will enable us to download price history for a single symbol. In this case, we'll be using Apple uh, ticker class Oops. so we'll go ahead and run this and the next thing we'll do is query the historical price so we'll use a history met method here let's use the history method uh, well, History period is equal to max. Let's run this and we'll pass in period equals max, which will query all data from the very beginning. And so let's create just double as you have run this uh, last cell. We end up with pandas data frame, which is very, very nice, as you can see. And this data frame, each row is a price of uh, of Apple stock on a single trading day. So as we can see, I think uh, non-trading days are not included in this data. The uh, column are like opening price. There's a price when the market just opened and the high price, like the highest price during the day and the lowest price during the day and close which is like the price of the stock when stock market stock exchange has closed and we have volume as well and so the total volume in that particular trade day so we are essentially going to use these columns to predict if the stock price will go up or down tomorrow uh, but we have like some additional columns like dividends and stock splits but we are not going to use this last two columns and we'll actually remove them later all right so we'll take a look at the index of uh, apple let's have a look apple.index as you can see um, we have a date time index and the index is a column on the left okay great next thing we'll be doing is we'll plot the data in the data frame so we'll plot the closing price against the index uh, so what this thing is it's showing the index uh, which is really the trading days uh, the dates on the x-axis and shows the closing price on the y-axis and so we can run that and we get a nice chart of Apple stock price history and 
we really can regret not buying this Apple stock at any time in history. Then let's do a slight bit of data cleaning. Let's do it here, control. Uh, we, uh, we can run this code and we can remove these two columns that we had just said earlier. So the next uh, so the next step that we are going to do is like we'll be setting up our target like so the purpose of our machine learning model is predicting the stock but, but like we had set up our target for that so let's uh, to do that let's actually create a new column called uh, called tomorrow and let's use a shift method for that uh, and let's actually create it like this as you can see the closest uh, each day has been shifted to the, to the tomorrow of the yesterday let's have a look at 16th of december 1980 uh, if you look at the close value like this is equal to the tomorrow value of yesterday, which is 15th of December, 1980s. Then the next thing that we are going to do is we'll be, uh, we'll be setting up a target and like it should return a Boolean so that like if the tomorrow's value is greater than the close, uh, it will return uh, one, but like we want to uh, turn that into the integer with the as type this uh, so let's say it here like this uh, now we can see like uh, close value is greater than the tomorrow's value so this zero because uh, close value is greater than and if you look at here close value is actually lower than that uh tomorrow's value so it's returning the target one so let's come here and let's create the next thing i actually want to do is we want to see um mostly last 20 20 plus years so we want to get rid of all the years before 1990 is uh, first of january so let's see it here like this. As you can see, we, read, uh, we have removed the previous dates data. And as you can see, like there's a target column and tomorrow column here. All right, let's start some most exciting part. We'll be building our first machine learning model. We'll be using random forest classifier for this. For some reasons, random forest classifier does not overfit most of the time compared to other models. One more, one more advantage of this model is it runs relatively quickly, so I think it's a better model to use for this project. So let's initialize our project uh, like this. Uh, here we pass some parameters uh, and estimators, which is like number of decision trees we want to train. Usually the higher this is, it's better for accuracy. Let's put it 100 for now. And minimum sample split, mean sample split. This helps us to protect against overfit. And let's set random state is equal to one. Now let's split our data <coughs> uh, into train and test data set. Well, actually, this is time series data, so we cannot use cross-validation as it may show us results uh, that actually might be really good when we are training, but not that good in the real world. Because in the cross-validation, we might be using future price to predict the price in the past. For those reasons, let's put all data except the last 100 rows to our training data and the last 100 to our test data set. Now let's call the, uh, let's create a list called predictors <coughs> uh, to predict uh, with all the columns to predict the target. 
target. We'll be using close, volume, open, high and low columns for this, uh, for this part. And common mistakes we could have here is that we might use tomorrow or target column in our predictors to predict target column, which is obviously not right. Now what we are going to do is to fit the model. As you can see, we are using uh, here uh, list predictors to predict the target. target. Let's try this. Okay, it doesn't end up here. We'll be measuring how accurate the model is. So let's start by importing precision score from scikit-learn matrix. Uh, and let's also generate predictions using our and uh, using our model. Here we used predict method and pass test data set with predictors that we have created earlier. So now if we run this and if we run Pratt's in a new cell, uh, we can see that it's a numpy array, which will be a little bit hard to work with. So let's make this a panda series. To do that, let's start by import, importing pandas. Let's run this. And if we rerun the Pratt's in a new cell, we can see that panda series here the dates with target, yeah, which is, I think, easier to read than the previous one. Now we c calculate the precision score. To do that, let's try it. Precision score test target and let's pass in Let's put it. Well, I think our precision score is really, really good <laughs> than I expected. And like, it's basically saying that our model, uh, like if our model has predicted that stock price will go up 78% per of the time, it's right. It will go. It, actually go up. Now let's actually plot these predictions with pandas concat function. Here we actually plot the actual values of a stock and predict values of a stock, Apple stock in our case. And the orange line like with a zero is our predictions and blue line is actual value of a stock. So we have built our model, but to make it more usable in the real world, we have to back test it with historical data and see how it performs. Let's start by creating a prediction function that uh, that it will wrap up everything we did, we did to just one function. So let me explain what's going on there here. So we create a predict function and we just did what we did earlier, like uh, fitting the model in this line and like uh, generating the predictions, then turning them into panda series and uh, concatenating it. Let's run this. Now let's create a back test function. Let me explain what's going on here. We passed our data, model, and predictors. And what's the start, start value here? Well, uh, for training, we want to have certain amounts, uh, certain amount of data to back test our model. One, one year usually has around 250 trading days. So it will be taking around 10 years of data for training. Step is like uh, 250 here, which means we'll train a year, then go to the next year, and then go to the next next year, and so on. It basically means that 
will first take 10 years of data for training and predict 11 year and will take 11 years of data and predict 12 year uh, data and so on in this backtest model we create a list called all predictions which will be a list of data frames um, uh, data frames where each data frame is a prediction for a single year then we create the function uh, to loop through the data after that we create the training set and test set where training set will be all the years prior to the year we want to predict and uh, we set up predictions and we append them then let's do back test with um, apple stock uh, our model and predictors let's do it predictions Let's run this. Oops. Ah, oops, we forgot trying this. Let's run this. Now let's come here. Let's run this. After having initiated backtest, let's start analyzing uh, error rate for our of our model to do that let's initialize let's have a look at precision score here it is let's run this well it's 52 52 percent which basically means that like if our model has predicted that stock apple stock price will go up 52 percent of the time is right or if it says it will go down on a particular day so it's like 52% uh, of the time is right but like as you can see from our like previous precision score uh, when we have just test our model it was like 72 or 78 percent or something um, so we can see that if we back test it's not performing as like as we have seen earlier if you are here until this part of tutorial and it was helpful, I'm really really happy for that. But before moving on to the last part, I want to see how helpful was this video. Could you comment in the comment section below if you want me to create last part of this video, which is adding additional predictors to further improve our model. Also, it would be so helpful if you subscribe and like. As always, thank you very much.